This is an image of an abdominal computer tomography scan, or CT scan for short. CT scans are a tool that have become increasingly popular over the years to diagnose a whole range of diseases. It's essentially one or more x-ray machines strapped to a wheel that spins really fast. And honestly, I'm glad there's a cover over it when it's in use. It would be so scary to be inside that thing if they didn't have one. Recently, I came across a 2020 study circulating around social media that claims that CT scans do not increase the likelihood of cancer. But in 2021, this study from the British Journal of Radiology says the opposite, that there is likely a link between CT scans and cancer, although that risk is pretty small, about one excess cancer per 10,000 CT scans. So which paper is right? Well, you've probably guessed what I'm gonna say next. It's complicated. A quick note on radiation dose before we go any further. Low-dose radiation is defined as the radiation dose that is almost certainly harmless, which is 100 MSV. Now, I can hear you asking, 100 MSV over what time frame? And that question in itself is complicated, controversial, and out of the scope of this video. But to quickly recap, there's one theory that humans are harmed by radiation after specific events, where they are exposed to radiation that is over a specific threshold. Radiation under that threshold is harmless. There is another theory where there is no threshold, and exposure to radiation accumulates randomly over time. The more radiation that you're exposed to over time, the more likely you're going to get cancer. If you're interested in diving deeper into this topic, this theory is called the linear no thresholds model, and it's really controversial. But for our specific discussion here, differentiating between these two theories isn't really important. Let's take a look at the 2020 study. After a big literature review looking at people who were exposed to less than 200 MSV of radiation, that's double the amount that is deemed harmless, the researchers picked the highest quality studies they could find on the topic of does low-dose radiation cause cancer, and they put the results together. Here are the studies it selected as high quality studies. I have a few thoughts about them. First, most of these studies are not looking at CT scans. They're looking at atomic bomb survivors, people who work around nuclear materials, or something else entirely. These are not the same conditions as a CT scan. In a CT scan, patients don't, or at least they shouldn't be getting a full body CT scan. Only a specific part of the body is exposed to radiation. But in these other studies, the participant's whole body is being exposed. And this matters a lot. The dose of radiation that you receive is related to how much of your body is exposed and what part of your body is exposed. Organs like the thyroid gland or gonads are more sensitive to radiation exposure than other cells. So if someone's thyroid was exposed to radiation at a nuclear plant, they would have gotten a very different relative radiation dose than someone getting a CT scan of their foot. Here's another issue I have. The type of radiation is also different. A person standing close to an atomic blast is being hit with neutrons, gamma radiation, alpha particles, electrons, and thermal radiation, which vary in quantity depending on the type of nuclear bomb that's going off. A person undergoing a CT scan is getting x-rays. I'll admit, the specific distinction between this radiation and how they affect the human body is well beyond my understanding. But my point here is, is that this isn't an apples to apples comparison. So why are we using them in a study about CT scans? A third issue I have is we're not controlling for confounding variables in the population. For example, children are 10 times more sensitive to radiation exposure than adults. Yet these studies include a mix of both adults and children. Children assigned female at birth may even be more radiosensitive than children assigned male at birth. People who work with radioactive materials for their job are also not representative of the general population's radiation exposure. All of these things, and it's not clear to me that these studies are consistently controlling for people's previous health history. Like, how many of these people were already predisposed to developing cancer? Did they check? All in all, only a few of these studies focus on our actual question. Do CT scans increase your risk of cancer in a specific population? Now, in comparison, that 2021 study by the British Journal of Radiology we talked about earlier, 
It focuses only on studies that look at the risk of cancer from CT scans, and it mostly focuses on studies that involve children. Yet another problem I have with the 2020 study is the large variations in follow-up length. If we look at the studies that specifically focused on CT scans, we'll see that they have a follow-up length between 10 to 23 years, and they're all for pediatric populations. So for most of these studies, if a child was 17 when they got their CT scan, they'd be in their early 30s when the study concluded. Cancer in your 30s and below is pretty rare. It's not that these studies are badly designed, it's just that so far, we don't know if having a CT scan increases your risk of getting cancer during the period of time in someone's life when they're more likely to get cancer, in their 50s or over. This issue isn't unique to the 2020 study though. The 2021 study has the same problem. Most of the studies that they use are with children and the average follow-up length is between four to 20 years after exposure. Again, cancer is rare in patients in their 30s and 40s. But let's say for the sake of argument, we can solve all of these problems. We are able to design studies that look at specific populations undergoing CT scans of the same part of the body, and then we follow up with them over a long period of time. The question of, do CT scans actually increase your risk of cancer, is still hard to answer. There's just a ton of variability with each CT scan. Let me explain. Every CT scan is different. The radiologists and technicians conducting the scan regularly make decisions during the scan that impact the dose of radiation received. If the radiologist wants a clear image or needs a wider scan area, more images might be needed and therefore the patient is exposed to more radiation. On the other hand, maybe the radiology team prioritizes achieving CT scans with the lowest effective dose. Those patients would be exposed to less radiation. But it's not just the radiologists at the helm that add variability to the patient's radiation exposure. It's the scanners themselves. Older scanners typically use more radiation than newer scanners. A chest CT scan on a new machine 20 years ago would have released more radiation than a chest CT scan on a new machine today. And don't forget, these machines are designed to work for decades. So that CT scanner from 20 years ago may still be in use today at one hospital, and then a hospital down the road may have a new lower dose CT scanner. To help illustrate all of this, here are two studies that both looked at CT scan doses in adults. An abdominal CT scan can be as low as 3.5 MSV or as high as 26 MSV, with the 25th percentile of patients receiving 11 MSV or less, and the 75th percentile of patients receiving 26 MSV or more. So one abdominal CT scan could be as low as 1 25th, or as high as one quarter of the safe 100 MSV radiation dose. And remember, people who are sick may get multiple CT scans during their illness, and those can add up over time. But this all assumes that linear no threshold model is correct, which it may not be. And if it's not correct, maybe none of this matters at all. So what's the takeaway here then? Well, to start, I don't think I have much confidence in that 2020 study. I don't think their methodology was as strong as it could have been, and that likely has impacted their results. But I also think it's fair to say that we don't really know yet if CT scans increase the risk of cancer. If they do cause cancer, the absolute risks appear to be low. Certainly, if you're told you need a CT scan and an alternative imaging technique isn't an option, the benefits of having a scan done greatly outweigh the risks. But I think it's also reasonable to be as conservative as possible with CT scans. While the total number of CT scans continues to go up for adults in North America, CT scans in pediatrics are dropping. Building strong institutional guidelines on when CT scans are appropriate to use will help ensure that CT scans are used only when they need to be, at least until we have more definitive research. The good news is more research is coming. There's a number of big studies looking at this very question that will be released in the next couple of years. Maybe we'll have more definitive answers by then. So what do you think? How do you decide when to use a CT scan in your clinical practice? Do you optimize for image clarity or lower radiation dose? Leave your comments below.